Hey fam, it's your girl, Miss Diva Trucker. I'm coming here from the house, okay? So I'm just seeing if my internet at home, The re y'all know the reason that I don't do videos a lot is because when I'm at home, I don't have a good internet connection. So I was gonna try it and see if they got my internet a little bit quicker or faster where I'm able to do lives. If not, then I will have to do a uh, recorded video. So I don't know, um, just let me know if you come in let me know if you come in, if it's lagging, if it's slow, whatever the case may be, let me know. And I'll get uh, started. But I did want to come in and say hello and check in with you all. And uh, what's going on? Have you started planting your garden yet? That's what I'm doing. I'm at home getting ready to plant uh, my garden. And... Um, well, I already planted a lot, so I got a lot of fruit trees, I got a lot of peppers, tomatoes, all that kind of stuff. So I just happened to be on the back porch uh, getting ready to continue to do some plant planting. But I wanted to come, hey, Kiki, can you hear me okay? Because uh, my internet is not that good out here. So I wanted to take time and see if I could do a video while I'm at home um and see if the internet picked up any or is okay but it's been saying slow slow connection but uh okay so um if you had hey tiffany if you have any questions or anything let me know um i'm just at home today at home today um uh, working in the garden but uh let's talk we can talk about anything you want about uh since we have a good connection right uh, let's talk about um the oh i had a uh uh like a revelation uh about the uh leasing hey val i had a revelation about the leasing about um um i was talking about like i was thinking you know maybe if people got more education on how to run a business or uh, maybe it had, uh, where can I send my lease? Send it to MissDivaTrucker at gmail.com. Um, and I will get it. So, cause we're getting ready to have another meeting in June. And I would like to have some leases that I can, uh, committee. Um, and I was thinking about, okay, what if, uh, drivers had like more, more education as far as running a business, what if they had more years? experience before they jumped into a lease right but i thought about that and i'm like well no that's not gonna pretty much work because you can have all the education and you can have all the experience um that you need but uh but uh if the system if the lease program is set up for you to fail there's no education or experience um that is right so if you have five years, 10 years, if you have, um, if you have uh, uh, a class or whatever the case may be, none of that is gonna really help if the system is set up for failure, okay? And that's the position I'm kind of taking. It's set up for you to fail. So if something that is set up for you to fail, um, it's gonna be pretty hard to um, um, be successful in, in in that lease, okay? Because the odds are so stacked against you. So we may need to look at it. Um, you think about getting some more drivers? I want to. I want to get um, uh, owner operators um, that have their own trucks um, and uh, be under my authority at like eighty eight percent. Like I get twelve percent and you get eighty eight percent, but. Um, they're going to have to know how to uh, like dispatch themselves and run themselves. I can get you trailers if you need a trailer, right? Um, or if you got your own trailer, that's fine as well. But um, I'm looking for that type of setup. Now, uh, I am put in a good position to be able to add people because I'm no longer with Progressive. Um, I'm with a new company um, and I forgot the name of it, but I'll let you know, but I'm with a new company. So the insurance is a whole lot cheaper, but the insurance is still going to be like your responsibility, right? So what I, what considerations that I have to work is because I'm not a big company, right? So I'm not going to take on a lot of the costs. Um, you got to have like your tags, your plates, right? 
Um, I can get that for you, but we're going to have to take the amount of what the plates cost out of your settlement. Okay. The insurance, I got to be able to take that out of your settlement. Um, I do the IFTAs. I do the, uh, I give you, uh, your ELD. I, you have to be under my ELD for compliance, right? Um, um, also with the tolls. So, um, the tolls are connected or are, are connected to my account, right? So um, I have to be able to do your tolls as well. So um, it's not difficult to do. I'm in a better situation to be able to add um, now than I was with Progressive because Progressive was killing us, guys. It was like it was ridiculous. It was like two thousand dollars a truck, okay? Um, and since I'm in the third year. Um, now it's like, uh, what is it? 2,900. Oh, thank you, Val. I will thank you for sending that guys. If y'all have any leases, we have, um, a meeting coming up in June and I would like to take the committee back a copy of some leases, some lease agreements, some settlement statements that you guys have. Cause I want to see, they want to see coming out your, uh, settlement checks. Um, uh, uh, I'm in a KLLM. Yes, I want a KLLM lease. I want a, a Snyder lease. I want uh, the Snyder leases where y'all uh, uh, go and get those trucks from Snyder. I want a copy of that prime lease, um, lease to purchase or just a lease agreement. It doesn't matter. Uh, KLLM. Um, uh, we're looking at uh, mostly uh, uh, owner operators that uh, get their truck through the company. Okay. Where you are getting your mine is a third party lease. That's fine too. We want to look at those because we want to um, compare them to uh, S. That's the one I want too. SFI. That is uh, crazy. Uh, that lease right there. Oh my God. Um, when they was telling me about I was going to get a truck from SFI and um, it just at the time, it was a lot. It was a lot. And um, 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 I want, um, we got a, a, a person from OTR that is on the committee. The president, the owner of OTR is on the committee. Um, OOIDA is on the committee. Um, and they usually work with owner operators, you know, people that got their own trucks or, um, um have purchased a truck and lease onto a company um yeah that's the one I say ego um uh, a super ego lease please send that to me um uh, miss d trucker at gmail.com um if you got prime if you got any lease tmc anybody that is leasing um and you got that truck through a uh third party um, and the reason why I say uh, 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 Snyder Finance, uh, SFI, is because aren't they connected kind of together the same way that Prime is connected with, um, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the name of their trucking? So they're kind of like connected together, right? So um, um, yeah, all those leases as well. The next meeting is going to be in June. You guys are very welcome to um, to join that meeting. Um, you can sign up on Truck Leasing Task Force. Uh, I got four more years with KLLM before I can take it from them. Those keep that we want to look at because we feel like um, a true lease, you should be able to take that truck anywhere, right? <coughs> so, um able to uh discontinue um leases that uh that you have to sign up with the carrier with okay and to give you more of an opportunity to be able to um um uh, they say it's separate entities okay i want to look at that because i i thought they're kind of connected in a way um and I also got to look and see what Snyder Finance SFI is. Um, 
can you take that truck anywhere? Do you have to pay like a, a, a extra money if you want to go to another company or can you just keep you, you only Snyder? Um, uh, tell, what is that other one? Tell net, tell uh, one of them uh, with the tail, the tail lease program. I want to look at that one. Um, and then next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start calling some companies to see if I can get a copy of their lease. I don't know if they're going to require me to put in an application um, um, before or uh, what. So I'm going to see what my experience is going to be calling companies asking, could you send me over a copy of your lease program before? Um, yes, you have to pay to move it. Okay. And I think it's a lot. Isn't it like a lot of money? Like five ten thousand dollars to uh move that truck somewhere so even with the um you have to pay extra money to move the truck at sfi center okay okay i I'll, i'm gonna look at that and i'm gonna take that hey uh nadia I'll look at that and i'm gonna take um i'm gonna take it to uh the the committee so they can look at it as well um, and so that the attorneys will be able to look over it as well. So that'll be a good thing, right? And also you can get feedback because you'll be able to know when the last time has an attorney looked at your lease, right? So if you wanna know, you know, uh, uh, yes, depending on how long you've been there. Okay, so like if you wanna know, you know, the ins and outs or the details or if you never took your lease to an attorney to look out, now is the time, right? now is the time that you can send because i think it's like one two three it's a couple okay so you can have them look at your lease and costing you a dime you know and make you aware of some of the things that you didn't think about okay what rights do you have or if any right so those are some of the things that they'll be able to give you feedback on the type of lease or situation that you, you are in what kind of recourse do you have right um but yeah um at first i was just like um because we've been meeting almost close to now going on i want to say almost a year so um we now get into the stage where um we are requesting lease from carriers okay so we did the introductory stage where we was learning about different leases you know lease to lease lease to purchase uh third party leases rider leases you know different types and then we decided to what types of lease to focus on um which the biggest target areas are the ones that are with uh the carriers are they going to take it out of their hands uh, where they're not able to uh, uh, lease, be able to lease their own trucks. They have to be a separate entity to be able to do that. So um, there are a lot of things um, that that the committee can make recommendations on. And depending on those recommendations, uh, Congress can say, hey, we want to um, 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 put a policy in, in place to oversee the leasing um department you know if you report it uh these things these things that can happen to you if you caught doing these things in the lease you know you can be fined um your program can be shut down for a certain long period of time or um you can just be not able to offer a lease purchase anymore to your people if you find you are found uh going against these violations right so um it's a lot that can be done and um and we're taking our time to do it to make sure that we get a aspect but when we were right the administration really gets it like if you heard uh the opening statement of the uh administration that is representing um, the attorney that reports back to uh, everybody, um, they get it. When I say they get it, they get it. They understand um, everything that is, is going on with those leases. And they are very much amazed, surprised, and shocked. Uh, some of the things that 
uh, these carriers are getting away with as far as uh, making you pay for these trucks. So um, it is being taken very serious because um, truck driving is like, we should take care of drivers like we do uh, military vets, right? Because they, they are the ones that keep the economy going. You know, and um, people bust their out here uh, trying to make a living. So um, it's very important that, especially in this administration, that um, uh, drivers that want to have their own truck and want to run their own business be able to do so. And running your own business doesn't mean that you have to have your own authority. That just means that you have your own independence in some kind of way, whether it is um, um, owning your truck and leasing that on to a company or whether it is having your own authority. But it is a way that you kind of like move up in the trucking industry, right? And that's what people want to do. So other than that, what else you, you all got going on? Look at my arms, y'all. I've lost um, 50, I want to say 53 pounds, okay? So um, now i got to work out muscles, okay? And um, try to uh, do that. But I threw all my um, 3X clothes away. I threw all that away because they was just falling off. And then my uh, 2X, I threw that away. Now I'm down like in maybe an extra large or a 1X, right? So I've been working on, y'all want to take a tour of, of my uh, garden and um, what I've been working on out here? So you got to bear with me because the signal may go out. But if you would like to um, go in and what I'm working on and stuff in my yard i'll take y'all on the tour just let me know right and we could talk about other stuff like tomatoes and peppers and um trees and orchard and all that kind of stuff um but i'm working on it a little bit at a time so let me know if you want me to take more of of where at my house okay backyard and what i'm growing uh, let me know, and, I, and we'll walk around as long as the signal will uh, cooperate, okay? So, but other than that, y'all, I just wanted to come in and check in with you guys for a little bit. Um, I am planning on taking a trip to, uh, are y'all still with me? Let me see, because I can record it too. I can walk around and record as well. Um, that way you will get a better instead of this internet situation. Mm -hmm. But let me know, are y'all still with me? We're here? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I was just like, I don't know what to expect. Sometimes it'll be here. Sometimes it'll be. But let me show you my working section. It's a mess right now, but this is what I'm working on, okay? All right. So um, this is my little uh, back porch, and that's where I work and do my um, planting, okay? So what I got going on right now is I just unplugged my phone. So if it goes out, Henry, let me know if my um if my signal goes out, okay? I'm going to walk around and show y'all, but this is my my garden mess, okay? So this is what I use to plant all my stuff, and I just got tons of whatever, but um I got my little seedling stuff started right here. These are like watermelon and peppers, okay? And I got tomatoes over here. I got my tomatoes over here. I got corn. I got squash. I got all kinds of stuff in that thing. Um, so let's go out to the garden. So this is where I sit every day and plant my stuff, right? So I got my peas. I got beans. Look, beans only a dollar and seventy-nine cents, right? 
So if y'all need me to send y'all any uh, seeds or whatever the case may be, guys, I got seeds uh, galore. My chickens are gone. So out here in the country, you got like uh, out here in the country, you got like um, uh, the hawks and you got like all kinds of animals and stuff out here. So uh, I wanted to get rid of that, that hammock right there. Um, but but uh, my chickens are gone. I'm going to get some more chickens. But right now I don't have any. That was my chicken house over there. If y'all could see that, that was my house for my chickens. That's where they stayed. Okay. So um, give me one second and I'll show you outside. Let's see if we could go. But um, I put this net around the porch so I could at least have, I got one little tomato coming in there and then I try to protect the tomatoes too. So I got another one coming in right there, the tomatoes right there. I got another one coming in right there. So now this week, guys, I mean, next week, okay, my, uh, this is about to be fixed, okay? So when I had a storm, it tore up that rug over there. So I got people coming next week. They're going to uh, put that all back down. They're going to fix the uh, whole railing around here, and then they're going to paint it, okay? So it will look like this right so it will look like this um so we got to get this all cleaned up all that will be gone over there i'm getting the pool together i got to get it vacuumed because you can see there's some like stuff there's my little um vacuum thing but it's not as clear as i um want it so they come in on a 22nd to open up the pool to get the pool ready and get it uh clear Okay, and I'm filling it back up. Now, let's go around here. There go Ripley. But they're going to come, and they're going to paint this, paint this whole thing all the way around. And they're going to put that back over there and fix that fence over there. Okay? So, over here, this is where I got my, like, trees. So, I think that's a pomegranate. I got uh, the peach tree over there, if y'all can see that right the peach tree and then i got like some squash and watermelon in between um that's my blueberry right there um i'm not sure what those are but this is a lemon tree right here this is a lime tree right there okay and this is a peach tree this is a one of those pink lemonade trees and this right here is a lime so this is a big lime here i don't know what this is right here but it's a fruit tree now these are all my eggplants eggplant uh collard greens squash all down there and those are all collards right there so they're going to be getting big they they quickly growing the collards and those are the peppers tomatoes uh cucumbers so i got a lot there but i'm working so every day i come out here and work in the garden these are my um i got orange plum pear trees and i gotta find somewhere to put them i didn't think this was coming back this is my raspberry i didn't think that was going to come back but it did and this is my grape. I didn't think that was coming back, but it did. This is one of the patio peach bonfires. This is a plum. And I got stuff on the other side. So, oh, up here. So I planted trees for my, uh, I mean, roses for my family members that passed away. So, um, so um, those are my sweet potatoes right there. But um, look at this. Let me see if I can come in my uh, mirror. Look at how this came out. My rose tree. But these are my strawberries, right? And those are my figs. And it's some peppers over here and some tomatoes. And those are tomatoes as well. So this is the rose tree that I had planted for uh, my, sis my sister uh, when she passed. So I try to plant a rose tree for everybody and I need to get a white one and 
um, a yellow one. So this is this side, right? So let's go around. In here, I got stevia. So there's some stevia that's coming up, but that's a fig and that's a pomegranate. And then, um, but all of this will be cleaned up next week. <laughs> okay, give me next week and this will all be cleaned up. I got people coming. They're going to put this back down. They're going to fix the fence. And hopefully, oh, here's my um, stevia plant. Okay, so with the stevia, y'all know y'all can eat this. This is sweet. This is uh, peppermint, peppermint. And I got um, basil, spearmint, sweet mint, and what is this? Uh, lemon balm. Okay, so the, all those are growing pretty okay. And then out here, I got trees over here. So I got a, um, I got a, a grapefruit tree. I got a pecan tree. And I don't know, the orange, lemon tree. Some of them came back and some of them didn't. But then down here, look at this tree. This tree came back. This tree came back. And that tree got big. So this is a fruit tree. I don't know what. Hold on. Let's see. We can see what it is. This is a apple tree. So that tree is an apple tree. I don't know if I'm going to get anything from it this year. But that's apple. This is blueberry. And I don't know what that is. But this is over here. Remember all of this used to be um, trees. So all of this was trees and they told me that I need to get rid of some of the trees and open it up. So that's what me and Sean, go, we would sit out here and go fishing. Um, I got to learn how to, I got to learn how to uh, clean catfish because there's a lot of catfish in there. And um, I'm going to get some rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down all that. I want to cut down the rest of these trees right here, right? Open it up so that the sun can get in and then i want to put some rocks i want to put some rocks but they mulched a lot of it and i'm gonna get them to go all the way around the pond and you can see the uh the fish out there when it rains it gets real muddy but you can see the uh catfish out there and uh, we just sit and uh, go fishing. But I do uh, catch and release. I don't actually, um, I don't actually um, keep it because I don't know how to clean it. So every day I come out here and I work and um, try to get things ready for the, uh, I try to get things ready for the, um, the spring and the summertime okay so when people come visit it'll be really nice and they could just hang out go swimming and go fishing right so but that's what i've been working on and next week i'll, I'll come back and show y'all uh this being done uh when they come next week but i hired some people to come and do this whole deck, paint it, and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, that's it. Let me see. Hold on. But yeah. Here, come, come on, Rip. Come on. Come on. And this right here, this was a, I think this was like a lemon tree. It looks like it's going to come back a little bit. And they say you're supposed to prune it. And those are my beans. I wonder why the leaves are turning like that. I'm going to put that in the ground. And a stevia plant. But, okay, I'm back. But, yeah. That's what I work on every day. And I didn't show y'all the other side, right? Um... What else I got? The mulching. Y'all didn't see that. Hold on one second. Let me uh, take y'all out here. Let me see if the signal will work out here. 
But this is where I spend most of my time. And and out here is like it's 16 acres, right? So I got all that in the back. That you see that house back there, all that in the back, and I just got this mulched. Y'all may not be able to see it, but all that was wood. See, I'm trying to get all that cut down. All that was wood, and I'll see if y'all can see it. But if y'all look down there, I got all of that mulched out all the way up to here i don't know if you can see it really good but let's see maybe the internet will hang with me but no it don't look like it's gonna hang with me but i gotta get all that mulched out i just had a uh um i just had a uh the only thing that they got is the uh, at&t and that doesn't um it's not too fast right so i gotta get all this cleaned out i want all this cleaned out and i got a path to the other side you see they done made me a path over there to the other side but all this i want it cleaned out and then you see i got that i don't know if y'all can see it down there but i got all that cleaned out and those machines those machines they cost okay like to have somebody come out here and mulch it's like um six hundred dollars for four hours okay for them to come out and mulch so and i gotta find somebody to come out and cut the trees because i want i don't want all these trees okay because it's bad it's it's bad for the pool unless I'm, i gotta get a pool cover because every uh every year all the leaves is in the pool we gotta drain the pool and um and get it refilled up so it's like five hundred dollars of water to get the pool refilled up so it's a lot but you just do a little bit at a time right and do what you can that's all you can do it's just a little bit at a time and do what you can right but um it's peaceful so but yeah that's what we do we sit out here on the back you'll see me i'll be on the back looking at um i'll be on the back looking at tv swinging in my swing having me a couple of uh cocktails okay and just be at peace but uh internet that the guy made by tesla i gotta look into that because i haven't been able to find um i haven't been able to find um i don't get it who cares obviously you do because you sitting right here why are you here i don't even understand y'all still doing that in 2024 being in other people's business how do you uh i ain't gonna worry about it because obviously you know <laughs> other than that guys i'm just sitting here um just wanted to show you uh around a little bit you know uh some of you have been out here and so i got something on my shirt but yeah i want to learn how to um um uh, clean the uh uh catfish so catch them and clean them because that'll be good clean them fillet them and then fry them that'll be something that's good right but other than that um uh, it's called starlink okay i'll check into it and see what they what they do but i've been here for like three years and um i haven't found any good internet that's why i don't go live uh anymore because the only time I, i'm able to go live is either if i'm in a truck uh, if I'm in my car um, or if I'm at the office because it's internet up here up there but for me to sit in the house in my in in my little office type thing and do like a live feed or whatever the case may be I'm not able to do because the signal is so bad so I don't know but I just wanted to come in and check in with you guys nothing's going on nothing whatever um, 
Uh, let's see. They say it's really good. Okay, I'm gonna look into it. I'm gonna look into it. As far as um, the rates right now is kind of like steady. They not as bad as they was, but they not where they was. Guys, I was looking at um, I was looking at um 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 the the loads and the rates from last year oh my god everything was like three four dollars was it last year or two years ago um it had to be last year because i had brought, just brought the trucks right everything on the board I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on my page what the rates was last year everything was like three four dollars a mile you didn't have to run nowhere to make like eight ten thousand dollars it was crazy and then i look at it now and it's like everything is half is what it was uh last year but um one thing i can say is that because now we was getting like we were even on like the private low board it had got down to like a dollar uh uh that's what i you just gotta hang in there right um and not be like going beyond your uh means right so that's why um uh, myself my partner and my son is running the trucks like if the rates was up like it was last year like three four dollars a mile i would have a problem with hiring somebody right I'd be like, I'd be hiring left and right. I would get two people in the truck if I could, right? Um, and I would have as many owner operators as I possibly could, 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 could take. Okay, plus pay all that, you know, help them on the insurance and all that kind of stuff. But it's just not there, not yet anyway. Um, it's not there. It's just not. Th it's just not that anyway. And I don't ever want to put somebody in a situation and make it a worse situation for them right if i'm going to put you in a situation i want to make it a better situation and I, I just don't see it especially if you got a high truck note and you got to pay the insurance and the rates are low and the fuel is high it's like it's so many things that are stacked up against you that i have to think about am i putting you in a situation that is going to be better for you or am I putting you in a situation that is going to be worse for you? So if if, if I'm doing that, I don't want to do it. So the ideal person, uh, let me see, when this truck is paid, I want, yeah, that's the, that's the ideal. Like when your truck is paid off, then it's like, it's a no brainer because all, and you doing your thing, you already know how to pick your loads on the low board or uh, sign up with whatever. I mean, all you do is take my, um, um mc number and if i'm not signed up i had some off or something the mosquitoes hold on i had, let me get this off okay so like um um but like if your truck is paid off right it's a no-brainer like 88 percent 12 percent uh comes to me and you out there just doing your thing and being safe uh i'm lisa jb hunt so i know the low board as well yep and and like i say it's you remember val last year oh my god Good. last year even if you was least on with jb hunt you was killing it okay but it's not like you know the indiana we kind of stay in um uh indiana ohio illinois um um the the land that i like right now val is like um aberdeen maryland to uh uh university park illinois okay university park illinois over there to aberdeen maryland run that back and forth because that's 600 miles run it back and forth and it's paying over two thousand um 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 each way all you had to do was run it three three times a week what six times four twenty eight hundred miles you run that four times a week and, and and you on the same thing you ain't gotta do too much dropping hooks on both sides child please the only thing is them them loads is kind of heavy you know them clorox loads are heavy 
um that's a lick oh and bow uh uh dumas uh, uh, uh arkansas dumas arkansas if you can route yourself over there to dumas everything coming out there is four dollars a mile and then they got the load that um they got the load that come out of dumas going to uh flowery branch georgia four dollars it's just heavy that pet food heavy um um and the uh the deer the deer the deer corn uh heavy okay but sometimes it says like 44 and it don't be 44. um uh yeah those loads are heavy yeah child that 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 right there puts a wear and tag but if they busting the tires on the trailer you know it ain't no problem but when they get the bus of tires on my truck it's a problem <laughs> you know you got a creep going through there then you're on back roads all the way um that's my that's my home low and uh do my in arkansas yeah i like it even around there and um um uh, what is it uh over there by bentonville uh arkansas those those uh pay pretty pretty good but the illinois you can't go wrong with illinois terry hawk indiana you know what i'm talking about coming to georgia that's three dollars or something a mile um uh terry hawk if you could get them uh on the uh uh jb hunt you just make your little thing jonesboro jonesboro arkansas uh uh jonesboro arkansas that's over there by memphis see if you gotta you gotta get a little short load coming from georgia over there to memphis drop that and then uh uh i don't think i picked up anything in jonesboro i used to go down out to uh uh um uh, uh way out there in arkansas over there by russell uh, not russellville um it's like a hundred hundred miles from dumas over that area over there by um uh i forgot um i forgot but uh uh there indiana terry hall you get some good money coming out of terry hall uh ohio is gonna give you good um pennsylvania been giving you good if you run up there but it ain't been co coming out good you know pennsylvania used to pay uh on usa now uh usa got some core loads they got the db uh snipner loads and they pay well um 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 on the uh is it indiola miss uh, uh it's not in mississippi i don't run to mississippi too much because um 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 i don't get anything out of there unless it's some atlas loads like up in meridian you know they they pay like atlas over here there's an atlas over here in hampton georgia the lumber loads and uh uh it's not lumber it's floor it's roofing um and they go over to meridian they pay about three four dollars a mile uh and they short runs okay so you can go to meridian uh uh pick up something over there and come back to georgia so that's what i like to do i like to run down to um i'll do a three uh like a um up and back so i'll leave out of either um uh, uh georgia over here go down there to tifton pick up a load at valdesta and run it back or pick up a load at douglas and run that to monroe um and those are dropping hooks on both sides so um that could easily be you know uh uh like 11 1200 uh 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 a turnaround not you know down there and back so you can get like 650 to go down there and uh maybe five six to come back if you're coming out of valdosta or tifton um i like to do that because i could be back home within the same day right um that's on the usa though that that's debbie hunt don't have those loads that's on usa um and um but that's it but hopefully it, it's looking a little bit better but not the way like we could just sit back and chill you know what i'm saying it's we still got to stay on our p's and q's and be uh very um um cautious like you know we can't just um be out there just all willy-nilly and you you got to stay on it you know just because you have one good week don't mean that the next week gonna be good so you got to stay on it that way 
um i just got the uh ac fix because um i've been like I, I i was holding off i was like it ain't that hot it ain't that hot or whatever but child i got into the truck uh the day before yesterday and went down there to tip it and like to die okay in that truck because for some reason the heat was coming in the truck like you know i would have the windows down and all that kind of stuff and the heat was just coming up from the bottom in the truck and i was like oh my god you know i wouldn't i would not want anybody to be riding in this truck with no ac right so i took it down there to sands um they put the uh the compressor on there changed out everything and now it's back to you know normal I had to get a mud flap. I had to get a, uh, a, a signal light fix. Um, but the AC, when my AC went out, that was $1,100 to get fixed, right? And then they had to add on the uh, mud flap. They had to add on something else. Oh, the mirror. Our shower was riding down the road and the whole mirror fell off. The, at, in the front, the front end of the uh, truck, the whole mirror fell out. So I had to get that. That was $65. So after I got finished with everything, it was about um, $1,600. But, you know, you can't, you, you, you don't want to, uh, you got to have an AC. Girl, let me tell you something. You start making mistakes when you ain't got no AC. Girl, I was down there and uh, at the Target in Tifton. And, you know, USA be having these old trailers, right? And uh, that landing gear, baby, if you ain't got no WD-40, that landing gear is going to, you know, mess with you a little bit, right? I'm out there. I got on some pants. And I'm like, it's hot. It's like 80-something degrees. And I'm out there trying to get this landing child. The landing gear did not want to move in the high speed. So I'm slowly getting it up. I'm pouring down with sweat. Ain't got no AC. Child, that would, guess what? did lock in my candles and i went to stop panel slid all the way to the back i said see i gotta get some ac in this truck because it it been made so mad you start making mistakes out here you know so uh uh it be hot yep so i uh went and got that uh ac fix i don't found me a little spot to get me something to eat there's a little um girl going down 75 there's a little they got a little crispy crunch i don't know if y'all know about crispy crunch but i love crispy crunch child they got a little crispy crunch down there it's at exit 80. it's a small little truck stop nobody hardly be there they be frying hot chicken girl and they be having barbecue wings up in there and then um and then they selling purses in there for 39 dollars. they not name brand purses but they some nice looking purses child i'm gonna give me one um, it's like a little carrot. You can have like a little big bag or whatever. You can take it with you wherever you want to go. But they got some cute little purses in there for like $39. Uh, they selling chicken. They selling purses in there. They sell, and it's a cute little spot um, to go in there and get you a little fuel and uh, get you something to eat. And, uh, you know, buy a purse if you want to, okay? um but yeah i love it i i love that little route and don't let me tell you something they don't play in georgia okay when you come to georgia don't 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 be trying to speed and do all that you know try it somewhere else not on 75 okay 75 do not play if you come down the 75 and you go around the 285 and you get back on the 75 you are now in south georgia okay and south georgia do not play with you they sit georgia state police do not play with you they don't even want to see you going uh five miles over the speed limit you got to take it nice and slow if it's 70 miles they are on you Val, let me tell you something they don't come on you with like one police okay when they stop you on 75 they come they already got three polices on you and i'll be like god darn it take all that in the middle of the daytime they done surrounded you truck drivers oh they love you don't come down through 75 south georgia i'm telling you right now thinking that you just gonna cruise all the way down to florida and they not finna hit you oh they gonna light you up they be you don't even see them and and now when you hit 75 and you come into georgia and you on the north part of 75 if you on that north part of 75 they sit on the bridge you don't even see them there they be sitting up there on the bridge with their thing waiting on you to come down that 75 like you don't got no sense right 
But when you get past that 285 and you are on 75 and you headed down to like Macon and Valdosta and Tifton, baby, they don't play. Okay? They don't play. They will get you. They pull trucks over all day, every day, just for fun. Just for fun. And it don't be one police officer. When they come, they it's three, four of them. All of them that got you. So it's crazy. And then they sneak up on you. You don't even know that you done got got. Okay? Before they like like right behind you. But um, but yeah. Other than that, that's it. What else got going on? None. Just chilling. What's today? Uh Friday? Yeah, I was supposed to go see um, Ashanti, but I seen her last year, but I had two free tickets um, and a free hotel stay for two days to go see um, Ashanti, but um, I didn't want to drive over there to Biloxi. It's like five-hour drive and a five-hour drive back, and then I seen her last year, right? So, oh, that's okay. Okay, that was our Sean. He just made it to the truck parking to pick up his truck. So he getting ready to go out on the road. But um our Sean works uh he works uh a full week and then he goes home for like two, three days. And then he comes back out and work a full week. But his lows is already planned. Um he's on JB Hunt this week and um uh, my partner is on USA, so I could plan up to five on USA. <laughs> And um, if there's a load that comes up going down to like Tifton or something, I'll, I'll take that. I'll go pick up a trailer and take it down there and um, and come as long as they got something coming back, you know, and just come on back to the house. But it's supposed to rain today. I hope that is true because how much do you think trees cost to get cut down? Like what's a reasonable price? For somebody to cut a tree down. Like $125, $100. But. Other than that. Yeah, I was supposed to go see Ashanti. Um, tonight, actually. And. Um, um, I didn't. I didn't go because. It's a five hour drive over there. And back, and then I seen her uh, last year, so I was like, nah, I'm not going to go. I'll just stay at home. Uh, what is your opinion on State's Bull, Bullet County? I don't I don't know anything about that. I don't know too much of nothing, guys, especially when, like, with the internet stuff and all that kind of stuff. I don't even look at regular TV um, like I used to. Like, I don't look at, I don't look at a lot of YouTube. I don't look at, um uh tv shows i just kind of um stay busy around the house and uh plant stuff you know and listen to my music and stuff like that um i be on a computer a lot though but i don't pay attention to a lot of stuff that be going on i be out the loop um and sometimes that's a good thing you know minding your business staying to yourself not being in drama and all that kind of craziness you know especially when you got real bills to pay child you ain't got time to be fooling with folks <laughs> you ain't got time to be arguing and fussing with nobody honey when you got bills to pay baby it ain't no joke but and I just try to do what I can. Oh, y'all want to see my peach seeds? Hold on, I got some peach seeds. Hold on. Um, stay out the matrix. Yes, honey, be driver free.
Okay, I got my um, I got me some peach seeds. So what I did was I took some peaches and I juiced the peaches, right? So um, I'm into juicing now. So I got the peaches, I juiced the peaches, right? So I took the hole from the peach and I took it outside and I used a hammer to open it up. It smells like vinegar. I put vinegar on it to make it sprout. But this, if y'all never seen the inside of a peach, this is the inside of a peach. This is the, um, after you take that hole off, this is the peach seed. So I got, um, I got five, I got uh, five uh, uh, seeds. And see, this is the one, see, this is the, the peach seed before you crack it open. And then once you crack it open, that's the seed inside. So that's what you want to use uh, to plant so you can have more peaches, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking like the seeds from everything. I can't find seeds in the, in the um, I can't find seeds um, in grapes. They don't took the grapes, the seeds out the grapes. I don't know what's going on. And then this right here, this is my lemon. So I got lemon seeds in there. And then I got um, um, apple, I think, apple or grape seeds. But then, oh, and this is how I get my worms, right? So I buy these little, I have these little containers. And then I take and um, I dig my, I dig my worms about the ground. And I put them in here and you put them in the refrigerator. And um, that's what I used to go fishing with. Look at Ripley walking around the pool. Look at him. Look at Ripley. Y'all see Ripley? Where is he at? Where is he at? Ripley be acting like he retired. He be acting like he be tired. Uh, thank you, Val. I appreciate it. But yeah, I did. You know, I. Uh oh. You get to like you get to uh like you get to a certain age. We all grow up. You know, like we just grow up. We don't have time for uh, drama and and BS. You you get around people that. You know, we got bills to pay. We got to worry about running this business. We got to worry about making it to, you know, making sure we survive, you know. And when you in that type of situation, you don't have no time for nothing but just coming up with different ways to be able to. Uh, do y'all have a term y'all use for male lot lizards? No. You just don't have the time for foolishness. Like, and, and, and you be looking at people like, you still on that type of time? Like, we don't grow up, we don't change, we don't grow. I mean, come on, like, I'm, I'm 50 something, I'm 53 years old. Like, I don't have time to be playing games with nobody. It's like, it's real simple for me. Like, we could either get along or we ain't even gotta communicate, period. Like, I'm not bothering you. Don't bother me. Leave me be. I'm almost for that. Yeah, it's just like, you don't have time for nonsense. It didn't be sitting, talk about nothing. You know, you trying to get to, you trying to pay your truck off. You trying to do this. You may be trying to build a fleet. You might be trying to get your authority. You might be trying to learn how to uh, broker freight. You know, I'm getting ready to go to China in August. Okay, why am I going to China? Because I want to do wholesaling. I want to be able to work with Chinese vendors um, to be able to bring their products over here to the United States to, and so I can store it, you know? So that's the type of time I'm on. You, we got to sit and think about things we want to have for our future. We can't sit up here and just be talking about and wondering what this person, that person, and the other person is doing. I like having conversations of, uh, when somebody be when I be talking to people and they be telling me, you know, I'm finna do this, I'm finna do that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this, you know, they coming up with different ideas, and maybe not everything um 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 is 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 going to you know be successful, but at least you try, 
You know, at least you got an idea. At least you're trying to have a plan to make something work, you know? And it may be something to do with trucking. It may not be something to do with trucking. You know, just like with my garden and stuff like that, you know? Don't nobody teach me how to do that. I just go buy some seeds and, and dig a hole and start putting stuff in the ground. Do you have land for warehousing? Yes, I have 16 acres. And if you see this building in the back, now hold on, let me turn, turn around. You can see that building right there in the back. One of my um, warehouses. I got two of them back there. Okay. So, yes, that's the type of time that I want to learn. I want to learn... Um, I want to learn, um, I want to learn international logistics. I want to learn how to be able to ship things from other countries to the United States or be able to ship things um, from the United States to other countries. I don't know that. That's what I'm trying to be around people that do that. There's a lady, um, um, that buy wholesale stuff all the way. If y'all would understand how much things cost um, here uh, 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 from um, from overseas, and how you can take a little uh, a product like you could take up any kind of product and you could make it yours. Um, you went to LTI because of me. How long did you stay there, Val? I'm glad with LTI uh, with uh, that I was able to get my truck, you know, that I finally had found a place that I was able to pay off a truck. And I, I can't be great any more grateful than that. You know, yeah, when 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 you out here and you about your business, Val, and you sitting up here and you because you come into trucking for a reason, right? You ain't come into trucking to be playing games and to be into the drama of it all. You came in here to make your money. You came in here to maybe uh, purchase a truck. You came in here to maybe uh, learn how to build your business. You came in to probably... Uh, maybe one day having multiple trucks. You know, there's a lot of goals that people have when they come into to trucking. And, you know, um, just like any, I was showing this golden child. She called it. <laughs> child, she's a mess, ain't she? Child, ooh, honey. I, at least I, I survived. Surviving LTI, honey. But, um, it's like, and then once you learn you, and you start growing, you want, are you familiar with the CLDA? I don't know what those uh, abbreviations are. You know, so when you start growing and you start learning and you see that there's other opportunities out there for you, you want to go for that. You want to try for that, you know. And you want to try to uh, 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 be around in Georgia. Oh, my God. Georgia is like the best place you can be as far as running a trucking business. You Everybody got a trucking company in Georgia. It's like Georgia and Texas. It's like either you have a trucking company or somebody you know got a trucking company or your relative got a trucking company. I mean, it's people in real estate that got trucking companies, okay? Um, it's celebrities that got trucking companies. Everybody got a trucking company in Georgia, okay? What they all doing, I don't know, but everybody got a couple of trucks in Georgia, okay? Um, and Georgia is like the hub, and they steady uh, building. Uh, I'm from Georgia. I live up in Gwinnett County. I'm in uh, Spalding, Spalding County. Um, but yeah, every everything, everybody like Georgia is like, especially in the trucking. It's like when you know people in trucking, you know, um, you know where to go get your truck fixed. 
you ain't got to never take your truck to no Freightliner if you are in Georgia, okay? Um, it's Customized Logistics and Delivery Association. No, maybe I need to look into that, Ron, because I don't know anything about that. I want to learn, and I need to find a place where I can take a class, go to a school or what, but I want to learn international logistics. I want to learn transportation, uh, uh, um, 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 what you call it, uh, I want to learn the ropes of customs, of, 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 of what they look at on things coming into the United States. Um, I want to be a hub. I want to be um, that relationship. I had to download an app, okay, a, transla a, a translation app uh, the other day because the people that I got come coming to work for me, uh, don't speak English, right? So I don't understand Spanish. So how are we going to communicate and um, and um, and do business? And he don't understand English, and I don't understand Spanish. So it's an app that you could download. And if y'all would have saw me using that app, uh, what was it, yesterday? If y'all would have saw me using that app yesterday, you would have fell out laughing, child. Um um, you would have fell out laughing. Uh, I had to download the app, and what it did was everything that I said in English, it translated to him in Spanish. And uh, everything he said in Spanish, it translated to me in English. So after every, you know, interaction, he was like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And then after everything that I said, he was like, uh, yeah, yeah. So we was communicating on this app. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny and then but uh, uh, until we got to the price right so we started negotiating on the price he could say he could say his price in english okay <laughs> when he told me the amount of uh, what he wanted to fix my deck and all that kind of stuff that came out in english he had no problems telling me that in english right so, but that was fun to do. So it teaches me, um, and you got to have those things. What company you recommend to work for someone who just got a CDL? Um, it's, uh, you going to have to work. If you just got your CDL, you need to stay with that company for at least like two years, right? And it's going to be probably one of your introductory companies because on the smaller side, if you go to like a small, small company, like for instance, me, right? Suppose you wanted to come work for me. You wouldn't be able to because my insurance would be too high. My insurance requires you to have at least two years. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, most people, most of your big companies is going to give you a chance to uh, to come and get your experience. And you want to do that. Um, you want to be able to work for, uh, I would say, one of the uh, mega carriers to get your experience. And uh, then after that, you could branch off because there's so many other opportunities out there. I would say get the experience there, but I wouldn't stay there, right? Because you stay there, you kind of get stuck. If you're looking to grow and you're looking to one day own your truck, if you're looking to do all these other things, you're going to branch off after those two years. But, found, but once you get those two years, you're good to go. And another thing, make sure... Um, in order for you not to trap yourself in this trucking industry, make sure that you don't get no tickets. Make sure you don't get no violations. Make sure you don't get nothing on your PSP. Make sure you're not getting nothing on your hire right because that can limit you to the places that you go. When you were talking about you want to make over $100,000 a year, you can do that as a company driver, but you got to be clean. You can't have no tickets. You can't have no problems. You can't have nothing. Right. So it's that important. And a lot of times people don't take it serious when they first get out here. They out here running into simple stuff, you know, doing stupid stuff, uh, running over, uh, backing up. Uh, uh, usually they having a lot of backing incidents. Right. Or speeding or uh, just little things that can be prevented. And that right there, you may not think that it will hurt you, but it will, because every time you get. Uh, a ticket or something on your license that's a whole nother year or so that you're gonna have to wait uh for that to either fall off or uh so you will be able to go and get the types of jobs that you want that's paying like really good money and you ain't got to be out on the road three four weeks at a time you can actually go out uh a week and come home for your 34. uh some of them will have that you come home every day you know and i will always say the more things that you get on your, the license, the better, right? 
that right that's your bread and butter that's the way you win keeping your cdl clean and a lot of times um don't fall for the trap because mega companies mega carriers will put these little things now they may not be on your psp report but they'll put it on your high right and that that will stop you right so you don't want no problems when it comes to these mega carriers you want to go out there and do everything that you're supposed to do your logs your uh you're watching your clock everything that you're supposed to do just do that for two years because once those two years are gone by and your record is clean you can write your basically you can write your ticket to where whatever you want to do wherever you want to go and if it's something that you don't have experience with a lot of times they will train you to do that if you have a good record okay they will be able to train you to do those things so keep your record clean don't get tickets you know um and 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 you will be able to move on and and without issues the problems a lot of drivers have is they come out here they think it's a game they out here playing they running lights uh having speed tickets uh doing accidents um and it may not be like a major accident it could be something simple you know backed up into a pole at, at the shipper or something like that and those type of things will get those dings on your record and nobody is going to want to mess with you right so then you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to be going job to job you're not going to be getting the money that you uh you want okay because they're not going to be paying you anything uh they may want to put two of you in a truck so they can watch you because you don't know how to drive the truck properly and correctly um and it will limit you on your growth out here and you'll be five years making the same amount of money that you made when you first got your cdl so you don't want to be in that situation and you're going to have to limit your friends you're going to have to limit the people that you be around if you around people that ain't doing nothing with their life uh, and that that happens in trucking if you having these conversations with people not uh working on paying on their truck or they working on doing this or they working on doing that you're gonna fall in that same trap you got to surround yourself with people that are wanting to do better that are wanting to move up in in the industry and those people will help you you know and it's not all about a charge it's all about your mindset i would rather sit and help somebody that really is working towards their goal and want to pay off their truck or maybe want to get their authority than somebody that's out here just playing because not only are you wasting your own time but you wasting my time and my time is not going to be wasted on anybody right so um you you got to do those things you got to be able because a lot of times later is greater i don't make the same amount of money that i made 10 years ago okay so you don't want to be in that situation where you're out here five ten years and you still making the same 45 cent amount that you was making five ten years ago you don't ever want to be in that situation and a lot of times the reason people are in that situation is because they come out here and play everything is a joke everything is you know i don't care you know you got to care about something because this uh this game right here it is it, not to be played it's not to be just it's not a joke you know either you're going to be able to rise above or you're going to be in a mindset where you hate trucking you can't stand it you doing it because you got to survive be able to do it to survive or whatever it's the only job that you can get or whatever the case may be you don't never want to be in that situation you always want to put yourself in a situation where you got options okay always put yourself in a situation because you may not can do this all the time okay you may get sick okay you 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 may be that you're not able to whatever so you need to start putting your, yourself in a situation where you may can hire other people to work for you okay this this is not promised to us forever so why play with it why sit up here and 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 and, and get into drama and get into mess and be out here talking about everything else about uh, uh except how you going to succeed and how you going to uh bring in more money than what you're bringing why get away from them dumb dumb conversations you just have to and if you got to shut yourself off do that because it's it's your mind it's your peace right it's your peace you know your whole mindset will will change if you just stay out of any type of drama 
and I used to find seven, ten, uh, when I first got in the trucking, you know, ops, man, if I could take back some of the things that, you know, or, or just not be involved in some of the things that I was involved with, you know, not having internet beefs, not having people just going after you for no reason or just because of this, that, and the third, you know, and I see now um after being in this industry 10 years it's not as bad as it was you know i don't see that a lot um i see people really getting to their bag they get into their business you know they trying to show you a little bit about what they doing out here i don't even see uh a, a lot of the women out here bending over and you know shaking their behinds and you know talking about moving you know whatever trying to make trucking into this sexist thing um, I don't see a lot of that no more. You know, I, I see women getting out here, getting to their business. They buying their trucks. They owning their trucks. They owning multiple trucks. They getting their authority. They ain't in that drama. They ain't in they, that mess. They not doing that. You know, and 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 and, and that's something that sh should be celebrated. You know, if you're gonna have a hundred thousand subscribers or whatever the case may be, have that on your business. Have that on that you came out here and started from the mud, got it out the mud, and look where you at now. You know, that's something to be proud of. You know, hard work is always something to be proud of, and you can look back over your career and be like, "Wow, I, I don't know how." Uh, I made it, but I did some kind of way. I don't know how, but I did. And that's just with hard work. That's with hard work. It, 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 and it may hurt, you know, you to not be able to be all sociable or all that kind of stuff. But when you're working on something, when you're working on your craft and you know that you got to do better because of your family and the people that you have responsibility to, You'll cut it out. When you tired of playing, you'll cut it out. When you when you tired of playing and you really want to get to the bag and you really understand that, you know, that thousand dollars a week that you're making, or that fifteen hundred dollars a week that you're making, you now can make eight to ten thousand a week just with one truck. When you understand that, it's not a game. It's not a game. You know, and along with that money comes more responsibility. You got insurance, you got trucks, you got to take care of, you know, I got to worry about if my truck break down, who I got to be able to call somebody 24 seven on call to be able to go get my truck anywhere in this United States of America. I can't sit up there and call JB Hunt and ask JB Hunt, could you send a tow truck? I can't call USA and say, USA, can you send somebody to uh to uh to 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 fix my truck? I can't do that. I have to that's all on me. You know, if if, if one of these trucks break down, I have to find a way that I have to be able to recover, you know, to make sure that the load is there on time. So those are situations that you got to think about, you know? So it, it's a whole different mindset when you, when you get to this part of the game. It's nothing to play with. And I don't take it lightly, you know? I'm thankful for every day that I'm able to keep this business running, you know? Thankful for every day. Other than that, guys, I've been on here for about, what, an hour? And I'm going back to my planting, plant my seeds, and we'll see what the peach tree does. This is my lemon seeds, and I don't know what seeds these are, but we're going to uh, go ahead and plant those and continue on with the day. And what am I making today? I don't know. I got catfish in there, so I think I'm going to cook some catfish. And other than that, that's it. Work on some of my stuff. And everybody got loads, so I don't have to worry about dispatching today because everybody got loads. Arshana is booked up on three loads. My partner's booked up on five. Um, and I might go out. It's the weekend. If they got something that I can run down and come right back, I'll go out and do that. But other than that, peace, love, joy, and happiness. You all have a wonderful and blessed day. And I holler. Bye.